Hi, this is your host, Sapnil Bharatiya, and welcome to TFR Insights. And today we have with us once again, Tina Nolte, VP of Product at SpectroCloud. Tina, it's great to have you back on the show. Thanks for having me back. So there is some new announcements. Uh, so let's get into it. Tell me, what are you guys announcing? So since SpectroCloud launched in March this year, we've had customers ask us for an option that gives them SpectroClouds as a service experience, but with greater control over the placement and operations of the management plane. So while our SaaS option is easy and quick to deploy, has low operating costs, for some enterprises, there are critical workloads need greater levels of security and control than an outsourced service can provide, um, oftentimes for regulatory reasons. For example, many banks don't have the option of a SaaS management plane. Um, these customers can now get the same flexible management at scale that SpectraCloud provides with their original solution, but with the enhanced security and control that they desire, deployed in their preferred or blessed way. So the product deploys the same. Um, the highest level, SpectraCloud's value really aims to take the trade-off out between flexibility and manageability, and a key component of flexibility is the ability to choose where a management plane lives. So we see the self-hosted option as a natural extension of our, our existing offering. So, um, uh, yeah, when we talked last time, um, it was more or less like, you know, I was looking at the SaaS offering. So, so talk a bit about the mission and focus of what SpectroCloud is doing so that we can better understand that you are trying, I think the, the basic idea is that trying to serve the customer irrespective of where they are running their workload, whether they want a SaaS offering or whether they want. So talk about what your goal is, what your mission is, and how this offering is aligned with that mission. At a high level, SpectroCloud tries to bring the ease of use of managed services to enterprises' own flexible Kubernetes infrastructure stacks um, at scale, no matter where they're deployed. The idea is that enterprises and any other complex organizations have both their own unique infrastructure requirements and development teams that don't always need exactly the same things. So with SpectraCloud, we make it easy to deploy, manage, and govern the various Kubernetes infrastructure stacks that an organization needs to really juice developer velocity. So corporate IT can say yes to internal stakeholders, but they still keep everything manageable and safe. And again, like this is where that, that management plane, um, you know, self-hosted option just helps extend that story. When we do look at managed you know, Kubernetes or managed offering, uh, Number one is that where people are looking uh, things to be eased, because when you do look at managed services, you know, you do have to make compromises. You do lose some flexibility because you your stack is kind of opinionated. You know, you are making decisions for them. So talk, talk about the balance between flexibility at the same time ease of use. Well, I think you hit on a lot of it right there, right? If you want something that's really easy to use, the obvious choice for a long time was you know, these set of managed services. Like we take a lot, you know, um, the managed service offerings take a lot of flexibility off the table, but in return, you get something that, that's really easy to go ahead and operate. Um, we tried to do in, in SpectraCloud's solution was uh, take a slightly different approach. So we, what we do is we take that desired state uh, maintenance approach of Kubernetes and extend it to the entire Kubernetes infrastructure stack. And what that allows is us to offer people the ability to define what their own stacks look like, but have that managed service experience. So the Spectra Cloud system in the back end makes sure that the day two operations, um, the day two operations for your clusters and your various infrastructure stacks are, are you know, easy. We take the we take the burden off of you. So you get you get the best of both worlds: flexibility and then the the manageability as well. And yeah, you do have to maintain the balance. Now, if you look at the cloud native or specifically Kubernetes world, it's a very crowded, very busy space. So how is your approach? I mean, of course, every company claims that, hey, we are different, but still, you know, how do you differentiate yourself? Because there are customers who are validating your approach. That's, that's why they're working with you. So talk about it. Yeah. So again, it comes down to this, um, this core principle around taking away the trade-off between control and manageability. So if an enterprise is going to deploy a foundational technology like Kubernetes or anything else, 
they're going to want to be able to dictate their environments, their infrastructure technologies, their versions of those technologies that they're going to take advantage of, all while feeling confident they have the capabilities and safeguards in place to be successful. So when we speak to people about flexibility for Kubernetes infrastructure, we mean freedom of choice across a lot of dimensions. So um, as you were mentioning earlier, you know, what's the actual cloud that you're deployed on? So we could extend that to you know, the infrastructure in general that you're deployed onto. What's the base operating system flavor? What versions of that are you using? What's the version of Kubernetes? What are your networking and storage integrations? How about you know, security layers or monitoring or logging or maybe even for some of our customers, um, items of a standardized application stack? So folks care about flexibility in those layers for a lot of reasons. That could be anything from cost control, which we see less commonly, to supporting really cutting edge dev teams. Some want to be able to support multiple teams in use cases with sort of best fit infrastructure stacks. So say the AIML folks, they need their infrastructure to look a little different um, than say the front end website folks. Some of our customers care more about being able to offer latest and greatest technologies to their dev teams. Some people are very tactical and want to lower license costs by allowing an easy way to manage environments that don't need gold-plated support contracts. And finally, some just want to prevent themselves from being at the upgrade whims of, you know, of other vendors. Um, they want to decide for themselves when they rev versions of their software so they can control their own customer's experience. The core need is really the same in all those examples. There's a need to control what the pieces of the stack look like. So we aim to make it easy for folks to do that. You can define your own Kubernetes infrastructure stacks for the various teams or use cases you have, but we help allay the burden of responsibility for the deployment and day two um, management, like I mentioned out there earlier. One thing that uh, is also happening, especially when you look at managed services, that is companies are prioritizing security. So what about security in your stack? How do you deal with it at all, or there are so many different projects and solutions that company can choose from them? So we think of security as a multi, you know, multi-piece thing, right? So one is clearly whatever, um, whatever infrastructure you're deploying onto, including that that's, you know, provided by um, Spectra Cloud, should be something where development and maintenance of that particular infrastructure is secure. So we, we have a whole team that's dedicated to, to making sure that what we deploy passes various um, compliance conformance checks. On top of that, what we um, we see two advantages in terms of our technology itself on the security front. So one is we make it really easy for people to integrate the best in class security solutions that exist out there. We don't we don't kid ourselves that we're gonna, you know, out securitize you know, the security vendors who focus on this stuff. What we want to do is make sure it's really easy for people to go ahead and deploy those solutions. And so we have a lot of out-of-box integrations allow people to do just that. Um, and then the other piece is that this desired state maintenance approach that I was talking about, um, it makes it very easy for folks to go ahead and set policies within their, um, within their deployment around when upgrades occur for the various pieces of their infrastructure. And we can handle all that in the back end. That makes it very easy for people to keep on top of security related patches that you know, become available from the ecosystem. Tina, thank you so much for talking to me today about not only this announcement, but also uh, you know, self-hosted solutions versus SaaS solutions, where the market is going, how you take care of security. And I look forward to talk to you again. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And I look forward to our next conversation too.